Hello and welcome to Priority Parenting Session 2. We started this whole series as a gift to the parents where we understand the children are not born with any operating manual. We have to decipher, decode and understand for ourselves how do we raise our lovely kids. So what are we talking about in today's episode? Let's quickly do a recap of what we did last time and then we'll move on to today. Last time we spoke on a first session about boys will be boys. We spoke about Lynette, the mother and her growing up with boys all around. By the end, we spoke about boys will soon be men and the kind of values, the kind of culture that we help in raising them will determine the kind of men they will become tomorrow. Today, we will talk about a mother's love for the child. And when I say mother, I use the word mother very very generally where father are always part of that love. But yes, as a tiny infant, when the little boy is born, when the little child, the girl is born, you are the first introduction to what is the world of love. When you respond to your child kindly, he as an infant understands to associate kindness as a virtue. When you soothe him, when the child is afraid, he understands what trustworthiness is. So you are the first love as a mother, as a parent for the child. You are an introduction, a vocabulary of the world of emotions that you will be going to give your child. What emotions you want to give? Is it joy or fear? Is it love or anger? Is it happiness or disgust? The choice is yours. Let's talk about a specific family in a first case study where I call what a mother can do. So this family was in distress because the father who wasn't always around suddenly was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. There were three children in the family and the eldest by default after the death of the father assumed the role of man in the house. It wasn't something his mother told him to do. But he simply assumed that that's what he has to do with father not around. The father had left the family drained financially because of his alcoholism, because of his gambling and no life insurance around. So when the father was alive, the mother still had to work around as a housekeeper, as a maid for several families. But she was only part time so that she was there when the children are back home from when she's home when children are back from school. But now. Not only did mother have to double up as a housekeeper, but everything she got in a way from a restaurant waitress to paying the bills at the, at the local or, or doing the local groceries and laundries, she had to do. So let's call the eldest boy John. She, he, he saw that the world was all crumbling around him. As a child, he started protecting his younger sibling. He was afraid himself, but he didn't want to reveal this entire thing. The frightened little boy inside, the adult began to speak and he was always angry. He was angry not only as a, at, as a parent, he was angry at his mother. He was angry more so at his father because father was just not around. But then we saw a tough mother coming in. The mother would always come back home, soothe him, talk to him as if nothing is wrong. She pretended at least tried to pretend that the world around her was not crumbling. And in later years when this John, this boy grew up to an adult, he was asked, did you, did, not, did you like your mother around? He said, she was the biggest strength for me. When even I knew she was pretending, but I knew she was there for us. I knew, I knew that she's going to support us financially. And she said that mostly I never felt neglected because my mother was showing us how to work as one unit, as one family. Isn't that what mothers are? So that's our episodes, our sessions title called Mothers Are Pleasers. They are there to sacrifice every inch of their life for raising their children. You mothers especially, hats off to you. You know, good times, bad times, ugly times, tough times, you're there for them. The first one to stay awake, the last one to stay go go to bed the one who does the laundry the one who's in the kitchen the one who runs around for errands and one who's tidying up all the spilling things really a mother is someone where we see our own reflections we never know the love of a parent till we become parents ourselves 
I love this quote because when you grow up and you see your parents, you realize that they're just being ordinary beings. But when asked me as a father of my own little girls, I can assure you that I see them heavenly now. I see them angelic because of the kind of work they've done. So our parents are showing us how to find happiness. I love these two philosophies where one of them, the Aristotle philosophy says, men find complete happiness and contentment when life leaves nothing else to be desired. He's not talking about material possession. He's talking about a sense of deep satisfaction that does not come from a video game or a toy or those lovely cupcakes. This contentment is what Aristotle is speaking about. And then there is St. Augustine who puts a theology to it. He says perfect happiness is the one where the soul is searching for the truth. When you find the truth. You know, as mothers, I feel they are our Aristotles and Augustine at the same time. They show us the truth and they teach us the knowledge. They, these are the values the mothers have grown up with. Mothers, you are showing what courage is, what justice is, what chastity and wisdom is, what prudence is, what persistence is. Now, look at this mother and look at the way you show them what love is. Because you love them when they're 18 as much as when they're 8 days old. This is what a mother is. There is nothing. I know a case study of a parent who all, when the child, in the last episode we spoke about learning disability, especially ADHD, the only solution, believe me, I've had enough of counseling and heard enough of lectures, the only one of the biggest solution for these LDs, learning disabilities, is extra love. And that's what you can do. Just stand up for them and believe me what happens. Take a final case study of this young Elijah. Young Elijah was a self-conscious, smart boy. Good in everything. In sports, in elocution, in languages, in mathematics, behavior, in conduct, in personality. Only thing, he was a little shorter than the rest of the boys. So, they started calling him Stuart Little. So, our little Stuart was so much bullied into being this little boy that he didn't know what to do and his grades started falling in he didn't want to go to movies with the friends he skipped the swimming classes and he started stammering now this is the story of a boy who needed all the support from the family and what does the mother do because she was not able to come over his trauma she recruited help from the best person she could think of that's the father she told the father that I want you to talk to him that's all and what did the father do? He started driving our little Elijah around. All the father did was spend time with him. They started acting as if nothing's wrong. They started making him feel bigger than he is. And you know, one of the self-esteem workshops shows a mighty, a meek little cat look like a mighty lion. That's what Elijah felt. And Elijah said, believe in. His voice improved. So did his, you know, he, he improved in his physical appearance and he started feeling good about themselves. As parents, we need to be with us, especially our boys and our girls, our children, when they're going through this adolescence. The changes in the body, the hormones running here and there, the estrogen all around, the adrenaline going here and there. And that's when testosterone needs all your help when puberty sets in. And it's more t dangerous when the boys, because boys become more conscious with few things that start happening in. Their voices start changing. There is an increased sense that the boys feel the bodies aren't there anymore. Mothers used to come and show affection to the boys when they were young boys. Now they feel uncomfortable when you come and kiss your little son in front of all their friends. So what do you do? You go back and teach them what love is. There is a mother who told that there was a ritual she did with her son. Timothy is the young boy's name. She and Timothy would run before bed every time and whoever touches the bedroom door first wins. And of course, you know, it was a fun activity. As Timothy began to grow bigger, he would find it awkward to do this ritual with the mother. And the mother would insist on it. And now Timothy is in college. And he says, you know, mama, all I remember from as a child was that ritual of running and touching the door. And believe me, all it told me, I had a best sleep every night. Because I felt comforted by the fact that you were there running behind me. What is your ritual with your son? It could be just telling them bedtime stories, giving them a hug. It could be going for a walk. It could be watching something together. It could be anything that you and your children love to do. So as a parent, you will go through your own psychological change. 
when a child goes to preschool that the first time he will make new friends other than you you will have to accept that primary school will have its own challenges middle school puberty when sets in and when they become adults i'll give you one example of each of these ritual so that you can understand what you can do say for preschoolers tell them one core in the house that they should do it could be moving the wet load of clothes from the washer to the dryer or putting them in the washing machine the core could be something he does over and over again it could be sweeping the kitchen floor for the elementary school kids it could be at least 3 times a day he takes the trash out it could be that he can clean the dishes set the table something he feels as a part of the family especially in the distracted world we living in today your calls have to become very important for junior high school it could be asking neighbors if they have some work in the yard maybe painting the house it could be just going and buying things from the supermarket every week believe me they are what your children need for you to do so as we end up there was this lovely story a testimony rather from a single mother claire said that my son felt very distracted from me and i didn't know what to do and as a single mother when he was growing up especially during the puberty time when all the different hormones start changing i didn't know how to react to him and as a single mother i didn't have the men around what did she do she found the second best thing she could do the local pastor in the church it could be the ustad it could be imam it could be a you know it could be some guru that you refer to it could be anyone you feel strongly about and believe me the sons thanked the mother so much as they were growing because this mentor that the mother sought out for not only mentored the boy but also helped him grow into a man many years later when claire was driving and the son was sitting the son said mom can you just put the car aside put it in the garage put it in the parking and put the hazard light on mother was worried what is he going to say is it something on drugs is he going to say he want to marry someone and all the boy did was hug the mother and he said thank you mom for that one single decision for having someone else in my life where i could relate my challenges to you need to look forward to raising your children and find mentors and help wherever you can today's reference is this lovely book by meg mika called strong mothers strong sons believe me you all are those strong mothers and valais says sons i also add daughters to it great raising parents we have to first raise ourselves up in a self esteem in a consciousness and hopefully we'll raise very very strong children thank you so much i hope to see you more often you can log on to skyeducation.in for all the information and visit us on skyeducation tv on your youtube thank you so much have a great day bye bye